Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford, and today I want to share with you a few more details about my recently announced forthcoming online class in Old Norse that I'm going to begin holding at the end of January. Now I'm sure people have questions about this that I'm not going to uh, address here, but I'm going to try to address all the questions that uh, I've gotten on Patreon as I've been discussing this forthcoming class there quite a bit lately. All right, now my intended price for the course is supposed to be a 16-week course, so roughly equivalent to maybe a semester and a half of instruction at a university. Of course, this is not being offered through a university, so it's not for university credit. Of course, you might ask what on earth you'd want university credit for Old Norse for. Unless you're in a field that's directly related to it, I don't know that it would do anything for your college degree anyway. But one advantage of not offering it through a university is it doesn't have to be priced like a university class. By my math, based on the most transparent university I'm aware of, a credit hour at a good four-year university uh, like the University of Denver, where I got this data, costs more than $1,000. So even if this were just a one credit class, you'd be spending 1000 for a three credit class, which is maybe a little bit closer to the equivalence, be more than $3,000. I plan to charge $397. That also includes the textbook materials, which are ancestral to the textbook um, in Old Norse that's going to be published by Hackett Publishing in the semi-near future. I mean, these wheels turn slow. I don't know exactly when it will be published, but this class represents the first sort of testing of those textbook materials, as does Brenna Bird's class in Old Norse that she's offering at the University of Kentucky at the same time this January to May. So we're uh, testing out these teaching materials, which are developed, um, you know, ultimately they're, 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 their furthest back proto form are the handouts and lectures that I did when I was teaching Old Norse at UCLA between 2011 and 2014 when that was my full-time job. Um, so yeah, $397 for a 16-week course. Keep in mind, that's probably what the textbook costs you in a 16-week course at a university. Schedule. The original time that I decided to offer is Sunday evenings at 5 p.m. my time, Denver, Colorado time. That should be optimal it seemed like from polling on patreon for people in the americas and also probably uh, the other side of the pacific too i got a lot of interest from people in uh, europe and africa and more the western end of eurasia too uh, for those people that time doesn't work very well so i'm also looking at offering another section same material just on a different day on friday mornings at 9 a.m Denver, Colorado time. Um, if you are registered, if you you know paid for a ticket uh, for this class, you can actually come to one section or the other or both if you're that just that inclined that way. That way, if you miss one, um, you can come to the other one. If you can swing that with your schedule, I will also make recordings of the classes available for people who have bought tickets into the class. Uh, so that they can either review material or if you happen to miss a day or something like that, you can go back and, and look at what you missed. Uh, if this is successful, I will run it again for another quote unquote semester. So, you know, this is roughly equivalent to spring semester. Um, if this is a success, um, I will, you know, maybe try again even as, as soon as like the summer but, or, or like the quote unquote fall semester. Um, starting again from zero. Although, also if it's successful, maybe I'll offer like a part two of this, right? More advanced readings. Uh, what are my qualifications for doing this? Well, my education in Old Norse, my PhD focused on the Old Norse language and the literature written in it. 
I have experience teaching Old Norse. Again, I taught Old Norse um, as a series of, well, uh, UCLA is on the quarter system, so it was a three-quarter class, a one-year class in Old Norse. I did that every year between 2011 and 2014, and uh, trained a lot of people who went on to careers in language or language-adjacent fields. For example, Professor Tony Yates, now teaching at UCLA, took my Old Norse class back then. And I am a transparent and self-critical translator. I publish translations of Old Norse literature. Those translations seem to be, you know, everybody has different opinions, but seem to be reasonably well received. And I, I like people to know why I make the decisions that I make as a translator. One of the places you can look at um, my process as a translator, or at least as a reader of Old Norse, is by looking at my videos on this channel, which I go by poems in the Poetic Edda and read them word by word, explaining uh, each word as I come to it for people who are trying to learn Old Norse. So I always, I want people to see kind of like uh, the process behind reading and translating this language, and this is sort of the ultimate expression of that, a class in which I will act as effectively your professor for a few months, helping you, um, correcting you where necessary, giving you assignments to sharpen your understanding, and uh, just generally being sort of your, your shepherd through these first few months of learning. Now, after a quick word from my friends and partners at Grimfrost, I'll tell you a little bit more about the structure of this class over the 16 weeks that it'll run. <laughs> All right, so this class is built around my forthcoming textbook, as I mentioned before. And that textbook is set up to be usable by yourself, right? You can buy the textbook and use it without an instructor. But it's also designed to be used with a class like mine or Brenna Bird's. And the 16 lessons are broken up into three subsections. So you get subsection a subsection b which you go through yourself and you have some exercises in and um, if you don't understand the answers to the exercises you can talk to me about them during the course of the week uh, i'll have some kind of special email address i set up for students here so that i can um, be responsive to to you throughout the week and then the subsection c right the, the material that the rest of the week's material is building up toward is introduced by the instructor if you have and instructor as you will in this course. So it kind of leads up to the most advanced material of the week each week. Uh, it, I'm not using the nature method. This is not being done through uh, anyone but me. This is just me and my extremely, you know, redneck amateur way of using the internet, just doing this all on my own. Um, so I'm not doing it through ALI, Ancient Languages Institute. Um, I respect them a lot. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed talking to Colin Gorey. We have a good interview with him on this channel about how ALI teaches ancient languages using the nature method, which involves talking to you conversationally only in the target ancient language. So, for example, you take Colin Gorey's Old English class, he talks to you in Old English. I'm not going to do that. I lack the spirit or joy or something to you know, carry me through that. Um, but also I think that Old Norse is far less intuitive than some other languages that this works well or reasonably well for, depending on who the learner is, like Latin and Old English. For that matter, it's also not being taught like the classic textbook format. Um, the only way that I've ever known Old Norse to be taught in classrooms, although surely some people teach it other ways, um, where you do like all the nouns, then all the adjective endings, and then all the verb endings, right? You, and then you start reading maybe toward the end after memorizing all these tables. You don't need to know every single possible type of noun endings to start reading some basic Old Norse. Uh, so what I do is I teach you, you know, some common noun endings, some patterns of noun endings, some common patterns of verb endings, some, you know, some, then, and then, you know, strong adjective endings, things like that. And we come back and we do more uh, advanced, less common types of nouns and verbs as we go through constantly getting better at Old Norse, but starting out with enough that by week four you can start reading some constructed texts. Um, 
like the nature method, I am willing to make up some readings for you at the beginning, just because there's not enough uh, easy Old Norse actually preserved in our written literature for you to, you know, pick up something from Snorri's prose and read it after just a, a, a few weeks capably. So the first few weeks, the readings are constructed by me, um, but by week, I think it's 10-ish, the readings are, are, are real readings. And throughout the class, the example sentences and things like that are drawn from real text. So it's just the uh, early readings that I'm making up to ease you into the challenges of real readings. By the way, I emphasize a lot of syntax stuff. Um, that may sound more boring than it is. I, I just mean how are things phrased in Old Norse? What are some different ways that one uh, talks about common things in Old Norse that would surprise an English speaker or perhaps even a modern Scandinavian language speaker? Um, sometimes Old Norse can be surprisingly complicated, even with very simple sentences. Uh, one example would be four-word sentence, Thorstein kretsk utan atla, which means Thorstein says he intends to go to Norway. Now notice the English translation there is a lot more wordy than the Old Norse original, and that's because Old Norse is communicating a lot of things with these small words that you can't communicate in English without a few more words. Uh, for one thing, utan, which means from out, is actually how you talk about going from Iceland to Norway in Old Icelandic, the language of our text, because they're still using a Norwegian frame of reference even after they've moved to Iceland. So going from outside means going from Iceland to Norway. Um, that's not something that you would realize just from looking this up in a dictionary or just from the origin of the word, but it's a critical cultural component, and that's the kind of thing that I'm trying to provide you with. Uh, likewise, trying to provide you with the equipment to understand the syntax and thing that like Kvetsk Atla says himself to intend. That means, well, that's, that's, so in Old Norse, you don't say Thorstein says that he intends. You say Thorstein says himself to intend, right? Just differently worded. It's a diff different syntax. It's the same message across, but you have to, to learn this. You have to get some experience with it, with readings and exercises, and that's part of what I'm providing. Also, the verb to go is absent here. Very common in Old Norse. But you wouldn't necessarily expect that if you're only learning, you know, verb tables and things like that. You're learning endings, uh, how, how things inflect, but not how things fit together into real sentences. And that's a big emphasis of my way of teaching Old Norse that I don't think you're going to find in a lot of other classes or textbooks. Worth pointing out, readings and grammar in this class are Old Icelandic. Uh, that disappoints some people because they say, well, I'm interested in Norway or Sweden, not in Iceland. But calm down. <laughs> There's not that much difference. Um, and you have to start somewhere. And it makes a lot more sense to get good at reading Old Icelandic before you start to read the much more sparsely preserved Old Norwegian, Old Swedish, Old Danish, something like that. Most of our written literature is in Old Icelandic. And the cool stuff is almost all in Old Icelandic, right? If you want to read about Odin, Thor, and Loki, at least stories about them, you're reading Old Icelandic. None of that stuff is preserved on the continent. Most of the sagas are preserved in Old Icelandic. So the differences are not so great that you would need to do a whole class in, say, Old Swedish after you've done an Old Icelandic class. You just learn a few certain, like, adjustments. You know, it's yak rather than ek means I. Or, um, you know, you don't have I mutation of the vowel in the present tense of present singular strong verbs in Old Swedish, that kind of thing. Th those are adjustments you can easily make once you're a competent reader of Old Icelandic. So... Our basis for the class is Old Icelandic. It's also worth noting that this is not a rune class. Reading in runes is its own complicated, difficult skill, and you'll do it much better if you're competent in the language they're written in. There's also a lot of little details about how uh, runic spelling works that only really makes sense if you've learned some Old Norse grammar already. And all of that Old Icelandic literature, right? The Porgeta. Prose Edda, the Great Sagas, they're all written in the Roman alphabet, the same alphabet we use, just with the addition of some letters that are no longer used to write English. So we focus on learning the language in this course. I may well offer an additional later course intended to help you read runes once you, you're a competent reader of Old Norse. Let's see how this course goes. You know, it's kind of an experiment. But uh, for now, just be aware this class does not deal with runes. All right, well, I hope that's 
intrigued you a little bit. People have been asking me to do something like this for a long time, and uh, I've been eager to try some new things and test out this textbook. So, um, you know, come sign up. I'll, I'll have details about exactly how to do that shortly. I'll, I'll, I'll share them here on YouTube, obviously on Patreon. I'll probably share it all on Patreon first. In case there's limited seats, I'll, I'll prioritize Patreon supporters. Uh, probably share it on Instagram too. Uh, so keep an eye on these places. You know, all of them have algorithms that can keep you from seeing all my updates. Just, you know, keep checking. And, and later in January, not too late, hopefully I will have details about how you can get uh, tickets and exactly how this is going to work. So uh, bear with me and I, I hope this will be an enjoyable and informative process for you. And from beautiful Colorado, my gorgeous outdoor classroom. I'm wishing you all the best.